they only did the CPR for two minutes mm. and then that's when they grabbed the white sheet and they put it over him. Mm. And I completely lost it. Like that day I took down three cops, three male cops. It is a crime scene now. You can't, we can't move anything. And I was like, no, chuck, like, chuck him in the thing, take him to the hospital, like do something, don't just give up on him. And then I like swung at the cop, hit the first one. So he comes in and they're both trying to pull me down and I'm just like literally like just throwing them. Shit. Yeah. And he like looked over and he's like, what the fuck? Like they still haven't taken her down. Mm. So he like come. Holy the rap. Did you have any tension in your face? Did you let it drip away? Your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard to be calm. <laughs> your shoulders. Neck. I'm just gonna face <laughs> away from <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like oh, all my Botox no. <laughs> no, let me loosen it for you. Hola mi amigos. Your host Mavericks checking in. I'm an Australian born Chinese actor, storyteller, orator, food comera, and narcissist. The Real Talk with Mavericks podcast aims to share real life stories that will make you laugh and cry. This show is all about making you feel more connected to people and the universe at large. So sit back, relax, keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times, and enjoy the ride. Three, two, one. Hello, guys. Um, <laughs> this is episode five no six of i've changed the name of the show to real talk with mavericks because at first it was um mavericks and mates but i feel like i wanted to change the energy of this this whole podcast and like share real stories because i was inspired by this guy like on on um youtube the other day and he was he was um interviewing shia labeouf you know the guy from transformers Yes. Yeah, and I was, it was just so impactful because he was telling stories that really like, happened to him and the yeah. traumas and all that kind of stuff. And he ended up crying and I almost started crying. I was like, I need to do something <laughs> like this because I feel like the, the name that I had before this real talk was a little bit egotistical. It was like Mavericks and Mates. Like, I am, I am the leader. I, it's just me and my mates. They're and just mates, decide. Yeah. But no, now... Put that all aside and... He's humbled and himself, guys. Yes, yes. I, I <laughs> took, took myself off that, off that ego uh, ladder. And uh, yeah, I want you guys to meet my dear friend Tina that I haven't seen in like... 10 like plus. More than 10 years. Like, I was telling her the other day that... Oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to be talking to them as if they're there. <laughs> but yes. Just pretend they're not. And uh, so I was telling her how, how like my last memory with her was like we were on at year eight camp and we we're at on top of this hill and we just kept rolling down the hill and there was no one else but just me and her <laughs> and we were just like having so much fun and we realized how how life is so different now yeah we're rolling down hills but like <laughs> metaphorically <laughs> Fig figuratively and not and not physically not, no, not voluntarily yeah, like we're no. not choosing to no. <laughs> it just happens it's just not fun yeah. it's not the same fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it's still fun but we're not choosing to look for that fun. It, <laughs> it, it, it chooses us. So, yeah, I want to start off with school. Like how, because school was where I met you. And um, school was just a time of so much like innocence and so much, it was so easy back then. Like I used to always hear the, the people outside of school say, oh yeah, you're going to go to the real life. When you leave school, we're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Adults can't handle shit. And now I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're I struggling. Understand. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, <laughs> so much responsibility. So, like, yeah, growing up in school, like, who who did you really hang out with in in Fairvale? Um, I started off with the Asians, of course, and then and then I moved on to the Islanders because I was playing footy. Oh, were you? Mm. I never saw you. Like, like. Like, uh, what do you mean, dude? I would like wake up at 6 a.m. go training. Really? At yeah. school? Yeah. What the heck? Yeah. I what? would like, I was so dedicated and then trained up for all those years. Damn. For the grand grand final and me to fucking snap my ankle. Oh, Two you weeks broke before. It. You yeah. broke the ankle? Yeah. 
I smacked Dang. it trying to climb my like pool. <laughs> what? How does <laughs> yeah. that even happen? Oh, it was so fucked up, actually. Like a pool out of just like one of those. No, safest you know, spaces. you know. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know those gate, the the pool gates, but oh, yeah, like yeah. the old ones with the oh, like. Oh, I thought the you were spike. in the pool. No, I was climbing to get to, to, get the, to pool. the pool. Okay, okay. And then I like put my foot through it, and then I went to like jump over, yeah. but I didn't realize it was still caught. Oh. So then like put my foot, Ooh. I fell, and then my uncle grabbed me on the other side, and then he like pulled me, and it just went. Oh. Yeah. So he broke your ankle, pretty much. We broke my ankle. <laughs> it's a team effort. It's a team effort, yeah. <laughs> Shit, when was that? Uh, that was literally year 12. Damn. And it was like two weeks away from the finals. Oh, no. Mind you, I rocked up in crotches, <laughs> jumped on the field. What the fuck? And fucking played. That's some Kobe Bryant shit, Like yo. a shit cunt, though. Oh, no, I still played, but... How did you even walk? Um, crutches. But... How did you pay for you with crutches? I had FOMO. I had like real bad FOMO. Why did the teachers let you in? She didn't. What was her name? Miss, um... The little short one with the like... Oh. The pink. Yeah, she was cool. Yeah, yeah, Come on. Preva Yes! Oh! Yes! She was full yelling at me. She was yeah. like, get off the field, bro. And I was like, shut up, no. <laughs> I didn't wake up at 6 a.m. to fucking stand on the sideline. Damn. Yeah, so I still played. Wow, that's... Like, that's, well, it's two weeks before the grand final. Yeah, um, my foot was, like, black for ages after that because I didn't let it heal. Jesus. And every now and then when I walk upstairs, it's like... (laughs) (laughs) But it's, like, like fully recovered? Mm. (laughs) Have you seen, like, a physio and stuff? No. What the fuck, yo? (laughs) Yo, so we went to go see the... We'll talk about, like, the, the therapy and that kind of stuff later, but... You went to go see a therapy before you went therapist before you went to see a physio. Or yeah, I mean I'm walking. But now it's all good. Like it doesn't seem like because we walked here, we just had like some food on the way here. But you seem normal, and you can still sprint and everything. Yeah, I played Oztag even after school. So. Yeah, I remember you were playing with um Cece, yeah. Yes. And you guys were like top of the food chain. Yeah, yeah. Like, what was the name called again? Uh, we had a few. Um, so the one that won the comp that I was in, it, we were called Olaf. Oh, yes. So like Frozen came out at that time. Oh, yeah. We were Olaf. Was that with the one with um, with Cece and Marilyn? And, yes, and yes, yes, yes. Was that the only team that you had with those? With myself, yeah. But then oh. they had like four or five other teams that they were oh, playing. Okay, cool. It was like back to back for them. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm a smoker <laughs> and I just can't. Dude, I don't know how we used to like sprint all day in school and stuff, play tips and I play know. basketball all day. And now it's like, just can't even get downstairs if we get a drink. I'm yeah, like, I'll just, just die of thirst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just sprinting to the train and you get to the train just sweating butt bullets. And yeah. just, <laughs> I'm never doing that again. Because like I remember versing. I don't know if it was Olaf, but I know for sure Marilyn was in that team. And like we we were undefeated for the whole season. We beat them. She's a gun. Dude, she is like I gotta get her on the on podcast as well. You, yeah. But um yeah, we we demolished every team for every single game until the grand final and they demolished us. It was so Oh, it was so heartbreaking because like, you know, when you're undefeated for the whole team and then the one game that really mm. matters, they take that away from you. Like I still remember PTSD from just <laughs> Being in no, fe- fetal no. position. <laughs> no, no, it was a knock on. <laughs> yeah, I was just I remember just, just in like fetal position, just crying and just like that Pon and Z thing. Oh just yeah. Cry in the shower just, so nobody can see your tears. Rain. <laughs> that's, that's how we got here. Oh my god! <laughs> like just seeing you again for the first time in since high school, pretty much I brings know. back all these memories Literally. of high school Literally. and everything, and just. Like how everyone had their own groups. There was like a social hierarchy. I don't know if you realized that there was a social that's, hierarchy. That's why I... Okay, so the initial thing was, let's get back on topic, where who I hung out with, it was the Asian girls. And then the Asian girls became the hot, bitchy Asians. Mm, the popular and, girls. Yeah, and then I just remembered one day, like there was like at least 13 of us and we'd just sit 
in the dead set middle of, <laughs> in between the cola and the canteen, and it was just that crop circle yeah. of the crop <laughs> <laughs> We were like, mm. yeah. <laughs> we're judging guys, you. Guys, look at me, guys. <laughs> we're in the middle. We're on the, we're the stage. Look at how my skirt is rolled. <laughs> like, yeah. no, and then I just remembered, like, I'm not that. I, I don't classify myself as hot or, like, I was a bitch. But I wasn't like, <laughs> but I wasn't like, honesty, you know. Honesty, I like the honesty. Yeah, I wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh my God, look at me, like, I'm so hot. Like, yeah. and then when they were associated with that name, I was like, that ain't me. Mm. And then that's when I started moving like towards the Islanders because I mm. was playing footy. And it was a whole different thing. Like the girls, I remember they would sit there and oh, I don't even know, I was so tuned out, but um, I don't know what they were talking about. Um, but the Islanders, it was more like, let's throw the ball around, let's sing. Yeah, and it was like so fun. Yeah, it was the guitars. Days. Yeah. Literally, it was the best. So, when did you start hanging out with the Islanders? Um, I think it was like, yeah, it would have been year eleven when I had mm, just that's when changed you... to music. Yes, I dropped something I from music, mm. and then yeah, and then like. You know, you have the Islanders that are in there and then they'd be like, oh, did you know Tina can sing? Blah, blah, blah. And mm. I'm just like, oh, no, I like. <laughs> yeah. And then we just bonded after that. And then, like, because of that, footy was better because we had a better bond. Mm. Like, yeah, everyone had a was, more depth. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were like, no, we, I've got you. We'll look after each other exactly. now. Exactly. We, we're not just here just for the game. We're here because we love each other. Yeah. And the game is just an add-on. Yeah, and it's just a that bonus. helps you guys to connect more. Yeah, that was Like that connecting was the tackles. Or, were you playing tackle? What were you playing? Fuck no, I'm just dead. <laughs> Are you serious? Me, up against the Islanders. Have you I seen mean, those girls? You could run circles around them. If Mm-mm. <laughs> Mm-mm. It would be a big circle. <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> Because um, the only re reason why I say that is because I used to play, um, I was pretty much like a social chameleon as well in high school. Mm. Like I hung out with the, the, the popular Asian guys. Who were uh, the popular Asian guys? I don't know, I guess like Andrew Fan, Ashley, and like uh, Andrew Wynn, and just <laughs> the only Asians pretty much. <laughs> Steven and uh, Tony. I thought they were the nerds. Well, oh, they were all nerds. They were, they were, anyway. they were less nerdy. They were less nerdy. Yeah, than yeah, the yeah, nerds, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, got nerds. you, got you, got you. So, got you. Yeah, I hung out with those guys, the, the nerdy of the nerdies, like Rakim. Shout out to Rakim, Hen Henry Lim and stuff. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll play bridge with them after, during, like, we'll take time out of my lunch just to play bridge, which is like a mathematics card game. Lol. Uh, in Mr. Barbuda's class. <laughs> and that as well. And then I hung out with the fobs as well, played tackle footy with them. And... I guess that's the time when like your testosterone is the highest yeah. like, and there's like girls around so obviously you want to show off as well. Now like fuck no, I would never play, <laughs> I would not play footy with any fobs, any uh, islanders like because I know that I'll break my bones. Yeah. <laughs> but, but back then it was like no, I don't give a shit, I'm running straight. Or yeah, even, but we had that energy though. Exactly, exactly. And so like that kind of was an environment for like just high school in general was such a weird we're at a peak. And, yeah, everyone's just peak going through the hormones. <laughs> yeah. They just want to show off. They just want to prove themselves. And they don't know themselves as well. That's when I feel like high school, that's when you really lose yourself. Because I feel like in primary school, you, you pretty much know what you like, what, what kind of things you like to do. But when you get into high school, you kind of get... Thrown like, back again. Yeah, Square like you, one. you're forced to do the same things as everyone else. Like, and then there's a whole huge like, pool of new fish yeah. as well. So you're kind of discovering yourself and you've got pimples on your face, that kind of stuff. So uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, like, I guess that's a connection that we both have. We both love, like, sports and just, like, moving our body in physical space, as uh, unpoetic as that sounds. Now we're doing the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like. I mean, I, I still try to, like, focus on, like, movement, but definitely the, the sports thing hasn't, I think it's kind of out of my life now. Are you still playing sports? I've been asked, and I'm just like, because I do lashing, it's a high risk. If mm. I mess up my thumb or my oh, fingers, yeah. I would not be able to lash. And these are my money makers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I kind of like my nails, even though like I can't keep them all. Yeah. But you know, I just realized, yeah. <laughs> what the heck? we can try. I did not notice that. Mm -mm. For those Spotify and uh, all the people that aren't watching this video, she has like nails on every single finger. And they're like, except for the index fingers. <laughs> yeah, and they're all I'm like, watching. yeah, they're all like freaking two inches long.
yeah. <laughs> inches? Why do you go by inches? You know, uh, if I was to listen to this, I'd be like, ugh, he just said inches. Now I have to Google. <laughs> oh, well, an inch is like, I think, two and a half centimeters-ish. Is an inch? Yeah, one inch equals two, two and a two half and a half centimeters. centimeters. Okay, that's confusing. Something like that, something like that. That's really The confusing. Americans, they always got to, like, they always got to be different. Inches, uh, feet, Have you seen the way miles. they do their maths? No. Uh, like their equations? You haven't? Americans. I need to, like, I'll link you later. Yeah. But you'll be like, what the actual fuck? Like, this is why. No offense. <laughs> but y'all ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Japanese people, the way they do their math is, like, yeah, just unparalleled. Yeah. Like, they are so creative with mathematics. So mm -hmm. I didn't know you could be creative with mathematics. But Japanese people, that's why they're so smart as well. It's the methods they use. But uh, yeah, going back to high school. High school. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, what, what made you say that you were bitchy? Like, how do you, how were you? I was the were great aware, bully. And were you aware of that back in the days? Or did you only realize that now? And I realized that after school. And then I was like, fuck, I feel like. I need to hold a reunion and apologize to like everybody yeah. because I was a mole. What did you do? Okay, so I was the great bully. I don't remember that. All right, funny story. Um, do you remember Dom? Dom Dominic? Tran? Yeah, Dominic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I met up with him. I miss that guy, by the way. Me too. <laughs> I actually met up with him this year. What? Mm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, funny story. Funny story. I met up with him like maybe five years ago for the first time after high school, Kathy introduced me, mm -hmm. reintroduced me. Yeah. And I was like, and she's like, hey, you remember Dom, right? And I was like, yeah, he's, to, he's in our grade. And then he's like, no, dude, I was in your class. And I was like, huh? which one? And he was like, I forgot which one it was. And then I was like, you were in my class? Like, and he's like, yeah, for two years. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and, and then he's like, it's okay because it actually worked and I'm like, what worked? And then he was like, um, like pretend to be invisible to you. And I was like, why? And then he was like, do you not remember? And I was like, no. And he's like, okay, so there, there's the, there was this thing that was going around at one stage where it was year seven, year eight, mm -hmm. into year nine. Like mm -hmm. year nine, I like kind of toned it down, but like year okay. seven, eight was like my peak. But you were um, in class with him in year seven, eight? I was in class, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd be like, so all the boys had this thing where if I was to enter the room, yeah. nobody can make eye contact with me or else they were gonna cop it. So like, as soon as I would step in the room, they'd yeah. be like, Tina's here, don't look, don't look, don't look. Don't and then I would like, you. and I would walk past and they're like, oh, it's not us today. The and I was like, what the fuck, Be why? submissive, be submissive. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why? And and then he was like, you would go around and kick people in the nuts for no reason. Oh, that is true. I do remember that. Damn. So you were probably like lucky oh God. and like on the other side and Sheesh. you went like in that group where I was. Yeah, you, I don't know. You steered clear pretty much all of <laughs> high school. But, but I had my fair share of nuts, nuts getting kicked. Oh my God. Yeah, I think I started that. <laughs> To be honest. Freaking hell. Shout out to Min, man. Holy <laughs> Min copped it the most. No, he, he did it to me. Or maybe that's why he did it that's to me. Because he, he's like, oh, I saw I'm Min sick of being knockout. Like, oh, I took man. a photo with him. Dude, knockout. Oh, I, that's a big reason why I want to go knockout. I just wanted to reconnect with like old friends. I saw so many people. Knock I saw Clarence as well. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I, was, I was really happy to like see some people yeah. that I haven't seen in ages. And I was like, cool. Uh -huh. You on drugs? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Just give me water first. <laughs> Going back to what you said about um, like how yeah you were being a you were a bitch for like seven to eight years, seven and eight. Like, do you know where that came from? Like, why were you such a bitch? <laughs> why was I such a bitch? Oh, well, I've never actually like sat down and thought about it. But why was I a bitch? Sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> no, it's okay. I need to think about this. Yeah. Maybe this will help me move this on. Is, this is the therapy. This is therapy. therapy. Um, maybe, maybe it was because I wasn't happy at home. I think mm. that's where all bullies stem from. Mm. Yeah, I probably wasn't happy and then it just made me feel better that I had control of something when I was mm. at school. Yep. And I was like, yeah, 
I'm that great bully. Yeah. I'm that mole. <laughs> so you took pride in yeah, being the bully. I did. And then like when I grew up, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Now I regret it. Yeah. And I want to say sorry. Um, yeah, that would have stemmed from there. Mm. I know that exact feeling of like feeling regret and like you kind of want to make amends and you want to go back in time and then just talk to these people be like i didn't mean to do that like i was just hurting myself inside as well because yeah i I remember i wasn't more so the bully i was more so the bystander that would laugh with the bully oh (laughs) so if anything it was a bit worse no it's not a bit worse well it comes down to perspective hey but uh i my friends were always the bullies and i was like i was the one in between because then i wouldn't get bullied but I wasn't stopping the bullying yeah. as well. So it's kind of like, where, are, where, do, where am I on the line? Um, but I guess going back, I used to think it was just, it wasn't, I didn't see it, it as bullying. It you don't see it as bullying, no. you just see it, it as like, fun. yeah, exactly. And it's not even fun as in like, ha ha, he's feeling bad. I'm, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling so good. I'm getting so high off this, but yeah. it's not that. But no, it's it just like, that. we really felt like we were just friends. We just, you, you always pick on the weakest link as a, for fun. Like there's always the run of the litter. That always gets teased, you know? Yeah. It's like a... And it's obviously, looking back now, it's like a dominance thing. But look, at the time, it's just kids just yeah, having fun. Yeah, I know. But kids can be so cruel. I know. <laughs> yeah. When I think about the stuff that I've said, I'm just like, I hope my words didn't change, like, their mm, lives. Yeah, yeah. You know, I had... Do you remember Luke? Yes. I had Luke come up to me one time, and he's like, I just want to let you know, you're on my top kill list. Oh. And he's like, there's about 10 of you and you're at the top. And he's oh. like, and when you're not careful, I'm going to, um, what did he say? I'm going to stab you with, what was it? I think it was either a fork or a knife. Oh. But he said plastic. And I laughed so hard in his face. I could literally see like ves- like <laughs> fucking veins. He was just like. He was just seething. Yeah, he was just like, <laughs> I'm going to kill this bitch. And I'm just like. <laughs> <laughs> She sure you want me to provide it? Like, fuck. Holy and now shit. I think about it, I'm just like, if he becomes the next Jeffrey Dahmer, I am fucking screwed. Like, yeah. I will start digging a hole right now and just be like, fuck it. Like, <laughs> I regret everything. <laughs> Damn. I completely forgot about Luke until you mentioned him. Yeah, But Luke. like, yeah. He... Luke I felt sorry for. <sighs> Damn. It wasn't Luke. It was Eggnog. Eggnog. Oh. Do you remember Eggnog? I don't even remember his name. That's how sad it is. I, I fucking paid that guy out so bad. What did you do? Eggnog. It was just well, like... Well, you named him Eggnog? I didn't name him Eggnog. Oh. I'm sure. But like, I used oh to drill that guy. Wait, was he... What was his name? I forgot his name. I think it was William. Was it William? No, no. it can't be William. But I, it's funny because as soon as you mentioned Eggnog, I see <laughs> the face. I see the hair, everything. Okay, Luke was like second down. Eggnog? But as soon as he got in my provision, I was just like, you, you're fucking dead. <laughs> da, 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 da. And he's just like, oh. Now I'm just like, where are they now? <laughs> yeah. Damn, shout out to Eggnog, man. Shout out to Eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But yeah, it's, it's really funny, like all these social dynamics and hierarchies. As a kid, like you don't even pay attention to it. It just happens. Yeah, it, it just, yeah. It's so natural for us as kids to build these clusters yeah clusters <laughs> and and just dynamics between the the strong and the weak the hot and the ugly it's and always like, been like that though so like it's just something that's part of high school i yeah. guess and it starts towards primary mm-hmm. but it's not as bad but then like once you get in mm. it's all about like your yeah. name and yeah like, you know, reputation who, yeah so it's natural but it's definitely natural at the end of the day, like, like fast track to all these years, some people, like, I've realised that a lot of the clusters, they have come together. Mm. Like, you know, well, I know a few people like Julie, um, Julie Huynh and, you know, Jenny and all that stuff. Like, we would still mesh with mm. them or, like, we'd yep. still be in contact. But back in the days, it was like, no, yeah. you stay over there. Yeah, we'll you stay hang over out here. with the... The boring kids, yeah. we're, we're, we're only we can breathe yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's facts. Because, yeah. like, I'm not saying that that's how I was with... Because I feel like girls are definitely more mean. Because 
Because girls, like... Oh, yeah, because we, like, hold on to got the mental, shit. mental <laughs> games, like... Because you guys aren't as... Well, the general population, the females aren't as strong as the me- the, the, me- the guys, the boys. Mm. So that's why you guys developed the mental game. And that's why even when it comes to, like, dating and everything now, it's, like, it's so easy for women to get into the guys' heads, whereas the other way around, it's much harder. Do you, do you feel that? I know that. <laughs> Confirm. Thank, <laughs> thank you for validating my, <laughs> my, my uh, statement. Yeah. But, um, yeah, because with me, like, going back to the whole you and Julie and, like, how now you're more yeah. willing to hang out. But back then, like, for example, do you remember Jamie Sock? Yes. Shout out to my man, Jamie Sock. Back then, I was in love with him in like oh, year real? two. Oh, for real? Oh, man. I'm going to tell him. I'm going to see him soon. And then, and then Cece took him from me. <laughs> and that's why I hated her. Like, guys. literally picked him up and took him nah, away from me. Nah, she was like, I'm the new girl, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, Jamie was gone. And I was like, fucking bitch. Dude, yeah. Um, wait, in, in primary school, she took him away. Yeah. <laughs> I know. And I was like, I hate that bitch. And now I'm like, fucking best buddies with her. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, Let's talk about Cece, man. But I'll, we'll go back to Cece later. But <laughs> like Jamie, man, like I didn't really connect with him going in high school, but I always respected him from a distance. Like he was always the dark horse, he was always like very quiet, always kept to himself. But he was so intelligent and he was so ambitious, yeah, and he was so hard working, but he was so humble, and yeah, so quiet and always doing his own thing. So I always respected him but i didn't really connect with him but it wasn't until last year we st- i started getting into, into nfts and i found out that he got into nfts too yeah and then i found out he's doing toastmasters which is like speaking in front of crowds and stuff and then that was like okay i need to talk to this guy and now we're like really really close and um, he's asking me for advice to go to like thailand and stuff so it's like crazy how the world works because i didn't connect with him at all until last year mm. so it's funny how the the universe works but um Going back to Cece, like, how, how is your relationship? You said that she's, like, your best friend right now. Yeah. How is, um, how is the dynamic between you and her? It is literally the exact same as we were in high school. Like, nothing has changed. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> nothing has changed. Um, you know, I'm still hating on all her boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still like, you're an idiot. Yeah. It's just, it has not changed, which is pretty cool because then, like, the best. I love that. I love that, like, those were the values that I love mm-hmm. about her, and we still, it's still there. Yeah. Like, even though through time we're getting older, she's still that same real person that I know. Mm. And she's, like, the utmost, like, literally the most honest person you'll mm. ever meet. Like, you could ask her anything, yeah. and she'd be, like, straight to your face and yeah. give a fuck how you feel or how you're going to take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're going to cry, but this is the truth. And then, yeah. So Little she keeps bad. me grounded. Mm. Yeah, she's always there to be like, no, or okay. like, this, that's not right, mm. straighten up, or blah, 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 and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> so would you say you're more of the, like the airy fairy in the relationship between her and you? Yeah, definitely. Mm. She's like, she's always like, no, come back down to yeah. earth, and you're stop like, being. Oh, the, look at this galaxy over here, and you're like <laughs> starting to fly. Yeah, 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 and she's always like, no. Aim on this path. Yes, yes. Keep to your plan. Yeah, yeah. Like, do the things that you said we were going to do, step by step. That's really, that's really interesting, because I would say that I, like, out of me and my very close friend, Michael, as well, he really grounds me as well. And I'm like you in that sense of like, oh, but this new idea over here, oh, but, but they, like, straight away you get bored of that and go, want to mm-hmm. go straight to another thing. And then he's like, yo, just stick just, to this one thing. Just finish just, it. Just, yeah, just <laughs> complete it and then move on to the next thing. Yeah. So it's really important to have those kinds of people in your life that Definitely. balance you out. Yeah. So if you're the more sturdy type and you're so rigid and you're so focused on just doing the same thing all the time, like, you need to find someone that is more like us where it's like, no, you've got to be spontaneous sometimes. There's the Try yin something and yang. New. Exactly, exactly. It's all about balance. Exactly. And that goes with both female and male relationships and male-male and female-female as well. Yeah. So it's really, really important to find someone that balances you out. But at the same time, it's also really... What's that word? Really effective. <laughs> <laughs> there you really go. effective. <laughs> thank you. To find someone that you can bounce off with the, uh, the same energy as well. Because if you have 
like two people that are both airy fairy that that's when like magic happens as well because you both lose yourself in a whole nother dimension and then that's when you need other friends to pull you to back put, yeah yeah so so balance is is good in moderation but sometimes you don't want to balance sometimes you want to tip over and then that's how you really enjoy what life has to offer right yeah. so uh yeah so your relationship with her when when did that start off was that in primary school then yeah we were in year two wow yeah it's very very long time so associated with a fucking hater because she's like a fucking year two whore taking all the boys <laughs> and um we always went head to head because we were both so competitive mm. we still are to this day but we we're both so competitive um at the time i held the school's record for 100 meter sprint so i think that clocked 13.25 seconds Whoa. yeah and i held that for years and every lunchtime Cece would come up to me and she'd be like let's race and i'm like dude you're not gonna win <laughs> and she'll like let's race and i'm like all right let's go <laughs> and like race it every day and she would never win <laughs> and she would always get so cut yeah um so we always had that like hate love but it was like genuine love yeah. back like but it's competitive but it's you like each other yeah yeah glow. we we just kept building Iron ourselves up iron. yeah um but yeah no we, i'm i'm so grateful because like the, the i cannot i cannot she has what a two and a half year old mm. she works she works during the day like she works in the morning she also refs and plays tag and takes mm. her kid to like and I just have like so much respect. Mm. Like how do you find how do you have so much time? Yeah. <laughs> like, Fucking magician or some shit. Bro, like how is she warping extra time? Yeah. So she inspires me in a way to like don't be lazy. Don't be fucking lazy. Yep. Just get up. Anything is possible if you just get up and start nice. it. But my problem is I'm like, no. <laughs> I, just two more hours. I, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit yeah. more scrolling. Like, <laughs> but um, every now and then I'll like, I'll hear her voice like, get up, get up. And I'm just like, <sighs> put the phone away and I'll like start my day or something. Wow. So definitely grateful for that. Mm, yeah, that's f so funny because what CC is to you is exactly what Michael, Michael is to me yeah because like he's he freaking wakes up at 4 a.m every single day and he tra like he coaches and he freaking cooks and he plays yeah. guitar and he does all this shit until like 9 p.m and he always sleeps at like 8 30 as well it's like how do you go does to he? bed how do you jump into bed at 8 30 who the yeah. fuck does that what kind <laughs> what? of psychopath does that yeah. but like he shows that it's possible as well if you just just do it and it's so much easier said than done but 100 percent. but seeing those people in our lives and just spending more time with them it really rubs off onto it me does. as well yeah so that yep guys find someone that is like a rock in in your life that mm. that motivates you to be better and want to be the best version of yourself because they make you feel inadequate you're like oh that, he's definitely doing the best that he's he's doing <laughs> but so then you look at yourself in the mirror like I'm, I know for a fact that I'm not doing the best that I can. Yeah. So, and that is what helps us yeah. to grow. It's not making yourself feel bad about yourself, but it just empowers no, you because you see the potential. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, well, because of that com like competitive nature that we have, I'm just looking at it and I'm like, bitch, <laughs> cooks, cleans, does the laundry, and still has time to like do all these things and be happy. And I'm like, mm. I need to like, I need to step up my game. Exactly. And that like slowly progress. Mm. At this stage, I'm taking a little break. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta, you gotta take your breaks as well, cause yeah. to, it's cause it's a marathon. Yeah, we can't no. just continue going all the way, cause then I've definitely burnt out, and I know you've oh, definitely burnt yeah, out. Yeah, I've, well. I've, I've burnt out, and I, I think I'm just like slowly finishing up my break now. Mm. <laughs> so like you're, last month. you're just ready to start. The engine again, again. yeah yeah continue. we're ready to go again yes, I know exactly um it's coming right. towards the end of the year like mm. i have goals um got a target deadline so mm. i'm like ready to go what are those goals and targets um get my project started um the, book. That, the journal yeah i'm gonna get that started once that's up and running um everything else is gonna follow through mm. 
So we're going to see. But I just feel like, dude, if you just bloody go to sleep early, wake up early, yeah. five to nine, and then like, you know, nine to five, mm. you could you could do so much. Like everyone is given the exact same amount of time. Yes, 24 hours in the day. And what you do with it really like defines or like really is what your life is about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fuck. that being said, um, I'm gonna try like my my goal right now is to probably spend let's say two hours a day max on my phone. Oh, Everything that's, else is that's dedicated to like time. I know, but there isn't much to do on on like if you really think about it, you're just yeah. consuming you just yourself keep doing with the rubbish same thing over again, yeah. like a circle. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going back and forth on different apps. Yeah. So realistically vicious cycle. Yeah, it's very toxic. Like you'll go on to Facebook and then you'll go on to Instagram, then YouTube, and then it just continues. Yeah, yeah, over yeah. And over it's and over, over and until like, I think I've hit a stage where, no, that was when I had COVID. Mm. I actually ran out like of Facebook. You know how Facebook is always going? <laughs> I literally, there was no more like, <laughs> and I was like, I've hit rock bottom. Yeah. <laughs> and of then Facebook. That says, a, that says something. Yeah, dude, I was like, wow. Well, you weren't like, you weren't even reading, you were just going, yeah? Like, you weren't even watching the videos. I was. Oh. Not all of them, obviously, yeah. but like, yeah, it just got, and then that made me realize like, this is toxic. Mm. And then that's when I like put the phone away. Um, what did I have in the room at the time? I had the like, you know, the little gems that you like. Little gems? It's like the color things. So you get like this. What do you do with them? You get like, I don't know how to explain it. You get like the artwork and then you like put the gems in the colored. Oh, like I think I know. Yeah. It's like coloring in kind of. Yeah, but like with diamonds or something. Yeah. So I did that for like four hours. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, so how do you feel now? And I was like, no fucking retarded. <laughs> like, that's exactly how I felt. I was like, okay, I did something like other than like just. Yeah, but you still feel unproductive. Like, what is this leading to kind of thing? Oh, Actually, I, I, it take it took me like. It made me more calm. Mm, oh yeah, it's definitely relaxation. Yeah, because you're present more. Calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's why I enjoy lashing as well. Mm. It's that's my meditation. That's mm. my time to wind down, mm -hmm. or like just be in my zone and do something. Yeah. Away from what's really happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, so, cause your lash, like your, so we're going to get into this real quick, but so Tina has like a lash business and you've had that since what, March 9, 2017. That's correct. Yes. That's, that's like more than half a decade already. Half, so congratulations. Yeah. Thank yo. you. Half, that's a long time <laughs> for, to, to work on a, like a, a business and continue and all these challenges yeah, and stuff. No, and you have good. to build the clientele and there's it's so much rewarding. to it. Yeah, oh, that's that's the biggest thing. Hey, like yeah. you're you're making women feel feel beautiful and you're making them feel confident. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. So the question is, why lashes? Like, why not plucking nose hairs? Why not bleaching buttholes? Like, why why lashes? Why lash? Oh no, 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 no. The story was or is, um, I uh, we bought a shop, a nail salon. Mm -hmm. um, my mum wanted it bought it and then I picked up like I tried to pick up the nail drill mm -hmm. absolutely shattered I was like okay one I'm not good at it I'm gonna cut someone had like full anxiety over mm. it so for like I think it was like a month I was like just scrubbing feet and then one day <laughs> this old guy comes in and he had like the nastiest <laughs> freaking toes <laughs> and he was like yeah darling just like you know do what you need to. And I was like, <laughs> you've got dead skin growing over each other. I'm like, fuck no. And dead then, skin growing over each other. Like, it was like, it was just like hard dead skin. And like, mm. because he, I don't know, it was just like connected to each other. I was like, you don't even have webs. <laughs> so tra so traumatized. Um, I was like, nah, I can't do feet anymore. Yeah. I'm like, you know, I need to find something else. And when we bought the shop, it had um, the previous owner did the lashes. And mm. I was like, 
So then I contact the owner. The owner actually um, is Andrew's sister. Uh-huh. So I we, thought I was going to Yeah, ask. yeah. So um, I called her, asked her where she got um, her certificate done, um, where she did the course. She gave me her contact. I did it. Surprisingly, I was actually really good at it. Mm. Um, and then it just took off from there. Oh, after a while, we sold the shop and I just continued doing lashes mm. because one, like my, my motto is like under my little thing is like where your happy, uh, like where your happiness matters. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'm like, yeah, great. Good great, promotion. Great, great yeah, business. Yeah, fine, fine. Great business owner right here, <laughs> yeah. guys. Learn, learn, learn <laughs> yeah, right now. Take guys. notes, jo please. Take, jot down those notes. <laughs> um, no, it's literally, it's so rewarding when like client wakes up and they look at themselves and I'm like, oh my God, mm. I feel so good. I'm so pretty. And they're like, you know, they would just stare at themselves and I'm mm. like, soak that all in. Yeah. That makes me feel happy. Because mm -hmm. like it makes them like, I heard there was studies to do with like even like nose jobs and things like plastic surgery where someone who had a huge scar on their face or something yeah. and they would like get rid of that or they would have a nose job. Like that person starts to walk different. They start to talk different. They start to see the whole world differently yeah. because they see themselves Them, yeah. differently. And so you're, even though it's like not exactly a nose job, you're still changing the way someone views themselves in the mirror. And that is one of the most important things in life, how you see yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Because yeah. for me, I remember when I was, <clears throat> four years ago when I was really depressed, I was so, I couldn't even look myself in the mirror. I didn't want to like even, like say the mirror was here, I was like, just peek at it because I had, to put, I had to put cream on, but my face was so puffy and like so swollen that like I didn't even want to look at the mirror to put it on. What? So, so I was so pretty much in a way ashamed of my the way I saw myself. Okay. And the, I thought that people saw me the same way, but it's so interesting how how you view yourself isn't always the way that uh, how other people view yourself. And so yeah, like the, what I'm trying to get to is that the way you see yourself is the most important thing in the world. One of the most next to like family and stuff mm. because that is what causes the ripple effect to get into everything else and how you see others, how you see every environment. So say if you get into, like it just helps you to change the story of scenarios. Say mm. if you get into a car crash, you could be like, oh no, like now I gotta get it. Like um, I gotta get fix this car, I gotta pay all this money. But you could also think of it like, wow, I get, got another chance at life. Mm. So mm. yeah, speak, can you speak more about that kind of stuff? Like in how you have evolved as someone that the way you see yourself as well in the mirror? Well, okay, over time, I, it took me ages, but over time, I reckon um, to where I am now, maybe four years ago, I was like a mess. Mm. I didn't, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't, because I didn't see, I didn't see anything more in life like mm. it my life was just like what is the point um and then I, and then after like a few years when i started finding myself or like lashing helped like mm. you know someone would feel good it made me feel good and then over time i'm like uh, you know you come across so many people as each, each person that comes they have two hours and i've also become like their therapist like yeah. it's a joke but it's actually no, real that's facts. it's actually real like um, we would share stories and you know I have clients that from day one that I started till now and I'm like wow mm. look at where you've come mm. like it's so it's like you're you're my child as well yeah. like I've watched yeah. you grow and yeah. they're like you know freaking 10 years older than me and they're yeah. like yeah I've got a kid now I'm doing my own business blah, mm. blah blah and it's just like stuff like that that made me realize that I'm so lucky to be alive like you know some people don't get that choice some people don't like they're limited to things and i'm here like all functioning and you know mm. like why am i wasting it mm -hmm. so i think the turnaround for me was like i don't know i woke up not woke up but like it just hit me where i was like you only you only get this one life like why not be the best version of yourself mm -hmm. 
So then, you know, even if you don't have a big ass name or whatever, like at the end of the day, those people that are closest to you will be like, you know, mm. she, she was like this, she was like that. Um, I kind of guess that that was rubbed off by Dylan as well, mm -hmm. because he, we would like drive around Fairfield or whatever. And then every person that he like knew, he'd stop and he'd be like, hey, um, uh, do you need anything? And it was constant because like obviously he knew everyone, right? Yeah. There was one day where I was just like on my phone and then he like pulled up and he said the same thing, like what he would say every day. And then I was like, you know what? And he's like, what? And yeah. I'm like, what if someone one day, because they were always like, oh no, I'm good bro. Like, blah, 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 and then we'd drive off. He's a random mate. And like, yeah, just ran like not random people, but like people that he knows. Yeah. Um, and then I was like, what if like one day they were like, yeah, like I need a pair of socks. What are you going to do? And he's like, I'll go get him a pair of socks. And I was like, fucking sick cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so then like, I took that. That's a pure heart. Right? Yeah, I, t I took that with me. And I'm like, yeah, um, if, if anything, I'm just going to do my best and like help. I believe I'm a, I'm a healer or a helper 100%. or something like that. So like anything that I can help with, I will. But in saying so, sometimes it does get like draining mm. and you do drown and you're like, oh no, everyone's above me and I, I'm down here and I need to like get back up. So um, in saying so, yes, it is good, but then you should never ever forget yourself. Yes. Yeah. You need to recharge. Yeah. You gotta pour back into your own cup. Yeah. And fill yourself up first mm -hmm. before you can really let that cup runneth over into other people's cups. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's that's such a beautiful thing because going back to Dylan, like he, I don't know if you know this, but like similarly to you meeting Cece in year two, mm. I actually met Dylan in year two as well. I was in class with him. Oh yeah. In, in Fairfield Heights Public School. And I had just like, this most random memory by the way, it doesn't. Everyone always says the same thing. Yeah. Like what he just say? appeared, yeah. <laughs> like, and that's how you know Dylan. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, he was in my class, and then I remember this most random memory in my mind. We were at the, we were at the, the, we were at lunch, and he just came up to me. He's like, "Hey, Brendan, <laughs> you want to check out my Goku tattoo?" What? Like, yeah, it was like he had like one of those, you know, when you chew the gum, and then there's like yeah, a little yeah, tattoo, yeah, yeah, yeah. a rapper tattoo, and he, he, w it was like apparently here, and then he's like, "Yeah, check it out." <laughs> and then I was like, I was looking, and it didn't look like Goku at all, but I was just like, oh yeah, cool. That's awesome, man. And he's like, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's Goku right there. That's the most around. I don't know why I remember that or what, why I still have that memory, yeah. but it's like a fun memory. Like, I just, he was such a, such a pure heart, even yeah. though from the outside it could seem like he was like a tough guy and like, you yeah. don't want to mess with him, which is true. You don't want to mess with no, him as well. Yeah. But at the same time, he was like a teddy bear on the inside. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's what I like used to laugh about where I'm like, <laughs> like the whole of Fairfield is scared of you, but like little do they know you're a little fag at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, mm, cuddle me. Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Only you got to see that yeah. true side of him. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh. And, and yeah, that, that kind of re remind me. I had another memory of him in high school as well and this is when we because after year two I went to a different class in year three and um, from then on I stayed in that same class I didn't really connect with him anymore until high school and even high school it wasn't really that uh, like when I saw him it wasn't really we didn't really talk much by the way guys Dylan is a really good friend of mine and um, Tina's late boyfriend late boyfriend he, we'll get into a deeper part of that story real soon. But I remember seeing him uh, at on the way to um, the canteen. <laughs> and he had the exact same energy exuding yeah. from him. Okay. He was just bigger. Just a yeah. bigger version of that year two yeah. kid. <laughs> and then he, he, he came up to me and he was like, hey, Brendan. And I was like, yo, what's up, man? He's and now he, Super Saiyan. Yeah, yeah, he had dyed hair, <laughs> spiky dyed He's hair. So, yeah. And I thought he was so cool. And he was, he was like, hey, Brendan, what's up, man? I was like, yo, what's up? And he's like, you remember, you remember year two? Oh, and I was like, yeah, bro. And he's like, 
Yeah, bro, me too. <laughs> and then we just went our separate ways again. It was just the most random <laughs> shit. He just needs to appear yeah. and then dip. <laughs> yeah, but I felt like we connected so much in that <laughs> yeah, two seconds too. about yeah, no, year yeah. two. Yeah. Like, because uh, that triggered all the memories of the Goku tattoo and everything. And then, yeah. like, I felt like we were so close for the two seconds. And yeah. then we just went our separate paths he, again. He actually, his presence was made a huge impact on like so many people mm. like you could just i don't know be in his aura and just be like fuck mm -hmm. i feel blessed yeah yeah, yeah. so amazing. i get that i get that when people say that there wasn't much that needed to be said or like but he made an impact 100 percent. yeah yeah it's crazy how you sometimes you don't even have to say a single word and your energy your presence is jamie jamie exactly jamie. back to jamie he's back to jamie our, our <laughs> Uh, primary school crush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck him on an episode real soon as well. Actually. Um, but yeah, going back to Dylan, like, how can you tell us about that story? Like about like just leading up to it and everything oh, that happened. Leading up to it, dude, there was and a like what year happened and everything. So it happened in 2014. Um, that day, well, the day before, we were was going to be Australia Day. But the day before that, because we received, so we used to, we used to celebrate our anniversary every single month. Yeah. Literally every single month was our anniversary. So every 20th. Um, so Dylan got, um, Dylan surprised me with our dog, <gasps> Trigger. Yeah. Which I still have. Oh. Yeah. Is it the big, um, Staffy? Staffy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so he surprised me with Trigger on the 24th of December, so Christmas Eve. So then, um, whatever it was, that next month, which was January, mm. we were celebrating Trigger's first month with us. Mm. So that's what we held the party for. Oh, okay. And yeah. Um, obviously, like, everyone got drunk. Yeah. Everyone was like, You don't have beep. to whisper it. <laughs> <laughs> everyone was, beep. <laughs> I beat myself out. <laughs> um, we were having a good time. Yeah, we were party <laughs> Um so yeah, uh, so he this had, was like, on Aus Australia Day. No, weekend? the day before. Oh, day before. Okay. Yeah, so the twenty fifth, but then when it all happened, it was like at three a.m. Mm. So fell onto the twenty sixth. Okay. And like you know, um, I remember like, I remember that day so vividly, mm. and like, it was the r routine of me waking up, oh, me sleeping, then he gets to my room, wakes me up. And he's like, come on, I'm going to take you to work. Mm. He'll take me to work, go to work 12 to 5, finish at 5, he'll pick me up. And then once we got home, I remember, this is the, like, this is the part that really plays with my head. Um, so, like, you know, over the years of, like, manipulating and all that stuff, that's a whole different other story. But um, there were times, let's, let's fast track with give you little snippets, but mm. there were times where I'd be sitting in the car and just minding my own business and he'll be driving and then out of nowhere we'll pass a light and he'll be like, why are we looking at that guy? Mm. And I'll be like, what guy? And <laughs> I'm not even joking sometimes. Yeah. I'm like, I think he's just making this shit up. Yeah. Like, just to see how just, you react. Right, and I'd go ballistic. Yeah. I'll jump out of the car yeah. while it's like still driving. I'm like, I'm done with this shit. And I'll like just jump out just to like prove a point that I'm over it. Yeah. Like stop. Um, so whatever, uh, I got to a stage where like over time I just got over it. So I was like, oh, whatever, I'll play on my phone. Mm. So I always had my head down, never looked in up. The, in the car? Everywhere. 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 So that's why like I have this like whole like anxiety of like going out mm. or like I have trouble holding a conversation or like talking to people uh -huh. or meeting new people because I still have that. Mm. And that's something I need to work on still. Like, I'm not perfect seems pretty good right now You're pretty i present. am okay i am okay making progress yeah it's but the therapy it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but um so we got back home mm. and he was like to me hey um that car's been following me all day and i looked up and i glanced and then when i looked it was like a a white echo okay or yaris a small car one of those things okay um and i remember i looked and then i was like straight away i was like no um he's just trying to start a fight so i looked away mm. and then i was like no like 
they're just being paranoid. And now when I think about it, I'm like, that could have been that key. If I had looked a little longer, I could have taken down what they looked like. You know, he wasn't joking. He wasn't being paranoid. He was actually oh. telling the truth. So it, like that plays over and over. I'm just like, what if? Mm. And, and then when it happened as well, same thing. This car, the car that was the watcher drove in. And I remember to into my street. Um, so equity places are a cul-de-sac. So you can only go in and then round the end and then back out one in one way out the same way. Um, so we were walking and then the car drove in and I remember this guy literally like driving and he was like looking straight at me. At and 3 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. And then I remembered like as soon as he made eye contact, I was like, like I'm gonna get in trouble. So I like looked away. Oh. And then, you know, when it came down to an interrogation, the cop was like, so what did you see? What did he look like? Nothing. And that burns me to this day, like nothing. And it took, it took the cops about three years for them to be like, to the family, yep, Tina has nothing to do with it. Because of like, you know, like, I couldn't give them much. Yeah, so it and made it, you look guilty. Yeah, it did make me look guilty, but like, it's, it was much deeper than that. And like, if you go through like, obviously they took his phone and everything. We were fighting like every day. Oh. So it doesn't, it makes, didn't look good, you yeah, know? Like it, it looked like you hired a hitman. Yeah, that literally. That, I'm pretty sure that's what they were like banking on for like yeah. three years until they were like, fuck, like, nah, it's not her. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, that must be so hard to deal with knowing that like your lover, your best friend yeah. just died and everyone thinks that you did it. Like, I actually didn't even think about that. Oh, you didn't? At all. Oh, shit. I didn't even think about like people thinking that mm. um, until the three years later when they were like, oh yeah, she's her name's cleared. That oh. was when I was like, what the fuck have you been doing for three years? Like. I've been sitting there outside the front writing down every single like plate that drives in and out and I've been like handing it everything I remembered I wrote it into like this little notebook and I handed it to the detectives so mm. till this day um, we still don't know who did it um, it's about to either be on pause or go into a cold case no way. because they have they don't have any more detectives to look into it which is like so frustrating because you're like just want some closure. Yeah, like, I don't know. At the end of the day, like, for me, would it make a difference? Maybe not. Mm. Um, it would probably hurt more because you're digging up the past again. That's true. So, um, but maybe for the family, mm. like, maybe for them it's different. For me, it's like, it's already happened. Yeah. Like, you, like, this person's, I don't know, probably walking around. Mm. It's like, what difference does it make? Um, if they get justice, good. But does it bring him back? No. Mm. So I've thought about like, would I, if I was to face that person, would I be able to be like, I forgive you? Yeah. Um, truthfully, no. So that means there's a lot more healing that I need to do. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm going to get there one mm. day. Oh yeah. It's all mm. part of the journey and we can only take one step at a time. Yeah. And the more we try to like rush things, it, it, it just makes it worse for us as well. Um, can you, obviously you're not, you don't have to say any of this, but if you are comfortable with like sharing like exactly, exactly what, happened, what yeah. happened. Okay, yeah. All right, so we get back, we're like, we're partying, whatever. And then I remember like halfway through the night, he was like, he was like, oh, um, can I invite more boys over, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, like my house is an apartment mm. and then he was like oh okay and then i felt bad so i was like you know what? like whatever do whatever like i want you to be upset mm. um so he started like inviting like more boys but they were from like bakery area or something mm. um whatever happened i after a while we ran out of alcohol so um we called one of my friend's cousin which li she lived down the road mm. and she was like uh, we asked her to bring more alcohol. Um, 
she brought down more alcohol and then it got towards the end of the night like let's skip all the way to the end and i was like all right it's like 2 30 in the morning mm. we need to like everyone needs to go yeah. and he's like yeah so i was like look um i'm gonna with me and the girls are gonna take trigger to go to the toilet take it and before we bring him back up and then we go to sleep and he's like yeah no worries so walking out and then like i remember like I gave him a kiss and then I was like, I was like, are you gonna come now? And then he's like, he's like, no, 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 no. And I was like, okay. So I started walking down and then he was like to my mate Susan, he was like, um, he was like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna carry one of the boys because one of the boys were passed out. Yep. And he's like, I'm just gonna carry them, say bye to the boys and then I'll meet you back up here. And then Susan was like, yeah, all right, no worries. And then he goes to her, hey, take care, yeah? And she was like, okay and then like we all went downstairs and for some reason that moment i don't know why Mm. but my dog decided to turn left so instead of going right which goes into the street where we normally go and then it like curves back up so we can like come back around Mm. my dog wanted to go to the left which is out of the street so we turn left we're walking there and we get right like just just before the street, the car drives in. Which but is that white Echo? It's not the white Echo. Oh. It was a red car with those, what are they? Oh, those the, eyeball the, lights. The lights that, that come up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was one of those. And I remember looked into like the guy that drove past. He was driving really slow. Mm. And I just remember like, I was like holding the dog, looked at him. We made eye contact and I was like, what the fuck? I looked away. And um, I just remember saying to the girls, like, what's his problem? Mm. Like, why was he staring like that? Yeah. Um, and then and then Susan was like, hey, can we turn around? She goes, I don't, I'm, I'm not feeling well. And I'm like, yeah. I thought she was like, you know, feeling vomiting from yeah. all the alcohol. So I was yeah. like, yeah, let's turn back. And then as we were like, as we were saying that, three gunshots went off. But me or us, I've never heard a gun in my life. And I'm like, oh, it's Australia Day. It's fireworks. Mm. So we're like, yeah. And then after that, um, we were like, okay, let's like turn around now. Like, we'll go back. So we were like just on the corner of the street. And then we went back in. As we're walking back in, we see like, um, we see someone lying on the floor. And he's wearing like all white. Oh, he's wearing like his white singlet and his like gray trappies. Yeah. And then we're walking back and then we're like, what the heck? What's going on? And then we started running. Um, as I'm running up, I get to him and I look at him and I'm like, he's like on the floor on the street. And then I look at him and I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like not responding. And I'm like, Dylan, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, it's not funny. Get up. And then I kept saying like, get up. And then he wasn't responding. I was like, okay, like actually it's not funny anymore. Get up. And then I looked, like I looked properly and I literally saw like a bullet, like a bullet hole in his chest. Mm. And I completely flipped it. Like I was like, this isn't real. Like, and then everything started like adding up. It was like gunshots and like he's on the floor and he's not responding. And I just like, I remember in that moment, I blacked out for a bit and then I came back and then I like ran to the front door. I gave... I gave trigger to my sister's boyfriend at the time and I was like, um, hold him, I'm gonna go upstairs. I went to grab the car keys and I went to like, I was like telling the boys to chuck him into the car so I could drive him. Mind you, I was like blind drunk at the time, like could not. Um, By that time I came back down, the lady from across the road, she lived on the like first floor opposite and she only had just heard, she didn't see. So she came running down and then started giving him CPR. And then Susan um, called like the ambulance, um, called his sister, like his sister. Mm. Um, and then, she, you know, she kept, she kept giving him CPR. Um, and she said to me that like, his last words were either mama or ama, which is his brother's name. Mm. And, um, at one stage he woke up and he was like, what's going on? 
Mm. Yeah, and then, and then he just blacked out again. And then we were trying to like resuscitate him. Um, that's when I think the cops came before the ambulance. Mm. So the cops came and then they were trying to like obviously calm him down or whatever. Um, and then the ambulance came and as soon as they came, they were performing CPR. Um, like it wasn't even like two minutes. Mm. Before they came? No, like they only did the CPR for two minutes mm. and then that's when they grabbed the white sheet and they put it over him. Mm. And I completely lost it. Like that day I took down three cops, three male cops. Wow. So um, I started like yelling because I was like, no, like people have passed away, like, like have gone unconscious for like 20 minutes and they come back to life, you can't just give up on him. And they were like trying to tell me that it is a crime scene now, you can't, we can't move anything. And I was like, no, chuck, like, chuck him in the thing, take him to the hospital, like do something, don't just give up on him. And that's what I was like losing myself about. Um, and then I remember like, I was trying to get to him and they were like, no, you can't touch him. Mm. And then I like swung at the cop, hit the first one. Shit. And then he was like, what the fuck? So he like tried to grab me and then tried to like, put me to the floor, but I was not going down. Mm. And then the second cop saw it and he was like, fuck, like there's like a full struggle going on. So he comes in and they're both trying to pull me down and I'm just like literally like just throwing them. Shit. Yeah, and then as soon as like the third one that was standing like over there, he was like taking down this or whatever, I saw him and he like looked over and he was like, what the fuck? Like they still haven't taken her down. Mm. So he like comes barging in and tackles all three of us. Oh, and then as soon as I was on the floor, that's when they were like, you know, they grabbed my hair, shoved me straight into the concrete. I had wow. like, I had like grazed on my like elbows, my forehead, my face. Um, and that's how my mom knew about it. So she saw me on the news with like blood everywhere. Yeah. Um, Cause after that, like I was in handcuffs and I was like sitting on the floor, mm. like just hysterically crying and like staring at his freaking body under the white covers. It was just, yeah, that, that night was just, it's something I get triggered by like watching movie scenes mm. with stuff like that. Mm. Like I just get like, I don't know, I go into like, I just. It's like you relive it again. Yeah. Like PTSD. Yeah. So I can't watch like movies with stuff like that because I'm just like, like I can just see it again. Like I'm right there again. Yeah. And it's just like, no. Nah. It just all comes out again. You feel yeah. all the feelings. Again. Yeah. It was, it's more helpless than anything. Mm. Um, I remember I did a first aid course maybe three years after and um, they brought up something about um, if someone was shot um, this is how you would and that really upset me because mm. I was like well why couldn't why couldn't I have known that why couldn't I have used glad wrap to compress and hold in the blood or whatever it was mm. um, so yeah that 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 guilt plays a lot there's mm. so much guilt behind mm. this whole thing. Yeah. Like the whole, like you looking at that guy and then, cause that triggered you thinking that like, oh, Dylan's gonna be mad. Yeah. So then you wouldn't do it, but then you feel like if you did do it, you could have, you might have. Could have changed something maybe. Yeah, yeah. A like tweak of information. Like something, yeah. Yeah. Like a butterfly effect kind of thing. Yeah, like I just, yeah. I think about all those little things where I'm like, what if, what if, mm. what if, yeah. so that plays a big part. That's something that I need to overcome. Mm. Um, but yeah. How did you manage to pull all the pieces of yourself back together? Because like, that's something that, man, like, cause I was, I wanna share something. Like the other day, a few years ago, actually, I was reading something and I was talking about how things that happen to you and how they, I guess where they are on the spectrum of the emotional pain scale mm -hmm. and some of the things were like for example losing a limb or like becoming paraplegic mm -hmm. those are pretty up there like in in pain and how they'll hurt you emotionally mm -hmm. and they numbered it all from like one to a hundred like 100 would be the highest the worst thing that could ever happen to you the most painful thing that you could go through emotionally mm -hmm. and up there was like losing a child, losing a, mm. a parent or something. But the number one thing was losing a spouse, which yeah. is pretty much what you hap what happened to you. Like yeah. you guys just get together for how long? 
Be, Ever until since then. he's seven. <sighs> yeah. So that was like eleven. No. No, it was like seven years. Seven years, and that's yeah. a huge amount of your time up until that moment. Yeah, because one, when you're going through high school, you are, like you said, um, we are back at square one, mm. and we are molding again. Yeah. And meeting him, that's all I knew. Exactly. It that that was all I knew, and once he left, I had no identity. Yep. I would go to the cemetery and sit there and cry and just be like, who am I? Like, what do I do? I don't have a purpose. I don't have anything. I don't have anyone. And that was like, it took ages. It took ages and like so much for me to go through to be like, to slowly be like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. Mm. Um, you know, I like to eat this because like for years I was always doing the same thing that I was doing when he was still yeah. around. Yeah. Um, because you were attached, you were attached to, at the yeah, hip. Yeah. And you're so used literally, to being with each other twenty four seven. Literally. So, um, yeah, it took ages. Um, but I think my number one, like, it would have to be. After everything, I, I I was drawn closer to God. Amazing. Yeah. Um, he's, honestly, <laughs> the truth is, if, like, someone told me, oh, if you commit suicide, you won't go to heaven. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> I was like, damn. Because I know Dylan's there. Yeah. So if I commit suicide, I'm going straight to the opposite. Yeah, yeah. And we're not, never going to see each other. Yeah. So that that kept me alive. Mm. Like, obviously. Like, like, you know, I wanted to fucking neck you myself. Just like defeat how many the whole times. purpose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, but because of like my faith and everything like that, I was closer. I felt um, I've had like I've had like really surreal moments where um, I I wouldn't say it was a dream, mm. but I know it was a visit. Mm. Like, have you ever had those stuff? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Cool. Like, um, there was a moment like. Um, Valentine's Day was the 14th of Feb mm -hmm. and I remember I was like to him like out loud I was like this is like our first Valentine's that we're not going to be together mm. and then I was like to him I'm like you always like you always do something I'm like yeah. I'd be really upset if you don't if you don't surprise me with something um, Valentine's Day came mm. nothing 2015 no same year oh same year yeah. same year because yeah. it was right after yeah yeah. And then I was like, um, okay, like, the day after, nothing happened. So upset. <laughs> I remember, like, I just cried the whole day. Mm. And then I remember because I cried the whole day, I was so tired. And <laughs> this was, like, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I was like the fucking goldfish. I was just <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah. um, so I was like, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. Like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm going to have a nap. Yeah. Um, as I'm, like, laying down... I literally remember, um, for the first time ever, I was like, I'm experiencing sleep paralysis. Oh, that was the first time ever you ever experienced Ever in my life. Oh and then man. I was like, oh, I've studied this. Like, <laughs> I've watched so many YouTube videos yeah. about this. I'm like, heck yeah. Time to lose yeah. a dream, yo. And then I was like, I was like, no, I got this. Yeah. I can, I, and then, like, I was like laying down and I just suddenly see a vortex open up. Oh, shit. And it was like, in like for me to explain it in this dimension <laughs> it would be like very vibrant purple and orange and it was just like whoa that's crazy yeah and i was like whoa it's that's the best so cool. color color combo yeah and then i was like i was like i can literally feel my like soul leaving my body and i was like whoa, whoa what's happening come <laughs> <laughs> on take me down <laughs> dylan <laughs> <laughs> and then zoom. two seconds later i'm floating um i'm floating through my street and I just remember like everything was like like contrasted to a motherfucker like I was like oh god so bright mm. like red was like vibrant red mm. white was like everything was just mm. like HD wow and like back then it was like 2014 <laughs> nothing <laughs> Two, was 240p and shit. like nothing was that great back then so I'm <laughs> like whoa <laughs> um but anyways I'm floating through and I remember the front of my house, yeah. instead of it being like that dingy, 
front of the house complex looking thing it was like two massive pillars and it was like wrapped in like gold or whatever it was and i just remember i was like wow that's really pretty and like you know how like after he passed away everyone was putting like stuff at the front of my house i remember seeing gigantic teddy bears and roses and like just everything was just like giant gun like choo, choo, choo. everything was just like mm. massive and i just yeah. remember flirting and i was like that's beautiful like yeah. dylan would love this da, da, da. i came back mm. and i was like ah i'm like motherfucker kept it a day <laughs> behind me but that was really good it's a bit late yeah but, but i'll take that better late than never yeah, yeah it was really really nice i'll did yourself this time yeah yeah <laughs> i was like damn it <laughs> what's next you're gonna yeah. be like <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. It's crazy, but like it was a like it's a feeling that I know a hundred percent that was not a dream. Yeah, I know it wasn't because it was a different feel mm. in that like wherever I was, it was just like I was there. Mm. Yeah, I, mean, I can't explain it, but done well. You just explained it. What are you talking <laughs> about? <laughs> yeah, but like for the for people to listen and just be like, Nah, she's dreaming. No, dude. Yeah. No, there's definitely a difference between like. A visitation yeah. and a dream. Something like something's just more vivid. Like I've had conversations with him as well. Mm. Like he'll come and he'll visit and we'll be like Like in his physical form or like he like his spirit body? Like what, um, what did he look like? No, I never I could never ever see his face. Okay. There was a time where uh, within like his forty days, um, that's you know, when they say the spirit's still roaming around, yep. like trying to look. Uh, within those forty days I had another visit from him, but this time I ended up in like a concrete maze. Mm. And I was like, what the heck? And all I knew when I was there was, I have to find Dylan. He's lost, he's cold. You just knew that in your head? Yeah, I just knew that. I like was there and I I looked around and I was like, okay, where's Dylan? I gotta find him. So I kept running around, kept, and then I ended up in this like one room where there was a bed and I was like, I just remember everything was like gray and concrete and I was Mm. like, fuck, like, where is he? And then out of nowhere, he appears and he's like, he's like, what took you so long? (laughs) And I was like, dude, like, do you know how many, how long I've been running for? Like, a maze, man. I can't just cut my hole and get to the middle. Yeah, yeah, I know. And then normal hedge ones. Yeah. (laughs) And then he was like, and then I remembered, I was like, oh, I'm like, nah. He's like, what's wrong? And I was like, that it's not you. And he's like, what do you mean? And mm. I'm like, I'm like, this is a dream. And he's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, no, it is, Dylan. Like, and he's like, no, I'm telling you. And I just remember in that moment, like, he put out his hands and I like literally put mine up again. And we like, once we held him, and I could feel his hands, mm. like, exactly how I remember it in like physical form. And I was like, I just remember like, I held it and I was like, it is you. And he's like yeah and like he started laughing and then um i don't yeah don't remember the conversation after that but that was like that was the first visit ever Mm. and then i woke up and i was like fuck wait like what do i need to do to like give him a proper send-off because he's lost in this like maze yeah so i'm just like you know does he need to be warm like and then i started bringing like maccas so like I'd order his like specific Macca's order and I'd yeah. like bring it to him and be like, okay, like, do you need to eat? Like, what do you need? Yeah. Like, <laughs> what was it? Yeah, huh? What was his specific Macca's his order? His specific Macca's order was a medium quarter pounder, yeah. no pickles, no onions, extra mayo sauce, oh, what? Fanta with no ice, and what the chips had to guy? be fresh. Oh, okay, yeah. That's the only, that's the only um, normal thing about that order. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, you brought that to him and did anything change after that? Um, uh, his next visit was much warmer. Mm. We weren't in a maze. Where mm. were we? While you think about that, yeah. I just want to go back to that 40 day thing. So mm. a lot of Asians. Do you believe think, in that? Oh, I reckon it makes sense. Okay. Can you, uh, you probably know it more than me. The, can you explain it to the audience, like what that is? The 40 days. So after you pass away, they say that your spirit or your soul is still roaming around mm. trying to tighten up the loose ends where they've, you know. Um, so they're lost in this realm 
and then after the 40 days is when they transition into like mm. wherever they need to go yeah, next they go towards the light and that kind of thing yeah mm. yeah sorry dudes the video cut off yeah so we're talking about um the maze like what what do you think that that maze was like symbolizing that concrete maze it that sounds... he was lost yeah like he still didn't understand where he was mm. yeah because like one it was confusing for myself and two how long has he been running in there for mm. like he's now in eternity so how long has he been running for for me to take that long to find him so mm. yeah i was just like um after that i started you know praying more yeah um, after that lucid experience yeah i was like okay like he needs guidance he needs more prayers more what would like a normal prayer be uh so uh if you pray on the rosary so you do the our fathers and holy mary um yeah you just do the whole and you're just like thinking of him the whole time um, while you're doing that everyone to be honest because then like yeah it goes if you pray it properly it goes for about like half an hour wow yeah you mean everyone in the world like you're just praying for the love of the whole human civilization at first it was just for him and then now like to this day it's for everyone mm. like sometimes i'll drive like i'll drive and um like say if i pass a church or something i will do a quick prayer and then like everyone that is around i'll just be like yeah make sure they get home to their families um mm -hmm. whatever they're going through today i hope they find you know ease in their heart or whatever mm. it is um so yeah generally it's for everyone now because okay. I've evolved. Yeah. <laughs> so when did that like start? Uh, what like, do you mean? Right after, like right after the whole passing, like you completely shifted one eighty. Yeah. And what were you doing before? Like you weren't, were you atheist? Were you? No, no, no. I, I was. No, I was, but I just never prayed. Mm. I never. Yeah, I never like I never really spoke to God like in that way or that closely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, it's it started changing me as a person. So, like, obviously, I'm not I'm not an angel, but like, it brought me back to that's Dom, when I Dom started. Knows. Suddenly, I realized I was the bad person in <laughs> school and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, like, you know what? If I don't get to make up to these people, I can make it up to the people that are gonna come come across. I'm gonna come across. Mm. I went through a stage where I was like, picking up and driving old people. Mm that were like That's hitchhiking beautiful. or whatever but um until they started robbing not robbing me <laughs> there was ungrateful <laughs> bastards <laughs> no <laughs> it was the lady so uh one day we were driving and i saw this old lady yeah this was like i don't know how like what year it was but um i picked her up i saw her and then i was like oh my gosh she's so old like mm. fuck it just like i'll just pull over and ask her and i was with like kathy and susan and um, I pulled over and I asked if she wanted to lift where she was going. She said, Cabra. I was like, all right, it's in the area. Mm. So as we're driving, I shoved in the car. As we're driving, I look in the rear view and she's like, to Susan, like she's touching her hair. And she's what? like, oh, your hair's so nice. <laughs> and Susan's what? like, <laughs> and I'm like, Don't sorry. <laughs> Anyways, as she, like, we get to Cabra, I drop her off. As she's like going out, she's like, oh, two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> What? And then she said, and I had heaps, cause like it would just like it would just like fall out of yeah. my pocket as I'm dr and I like I would drive like a full maniac. Yeah. Anyways, and she started picking up like I think she picked up like twenty bucks worth. What? The it heck? was like just gold coins. Yeah. Nothing like no silvers. I remember clearly like I would just leave in the back and I'd be like, yeah, when I clean my car, I have coins, yeah. you know. Um, she started picking them up and then um she was like, and then. When she closed the door, I was like to the girls, I just remember who she is. And they're like, who? And I'm like, she's the old lady from Cabra that always asked everyone for change. <laughs> Do you remember her? Like this really, really remember. old no. Asian lady. I don't remember women. I remember the men. That's because the men are still here. <laughs> <laughs> the women are oh, fucking... No, after she took your 20 bucks, she was like ready to like pay rent and everything. Bro, she's she, not homeless anymore. She was fucking banking and investing in properties or something. She was dumb. She was getting ready for Mufti Day. Yeah. <laughs> Fat Mufti Day. Gold coin. Oh man, yeah, and I've, I've never seen her after that. Damn. And she didn't say thank you. 
Oh, it's always those ones. That... She, she walked closed the door and didn't say thank you, and I was oh. like, "Mayo, yeah. okay, get out of here, bro." So did you? Did you have to? Did you change? Did you, did that change your approach of like helping people no. after that? No. So you don't want to know. No, there was only one, uh, the last time I picked up this old man just as I entered the motorway. Mm. Um, picked him up, and then he said he needed a lift that was three hours away and I was ready to take him Dang. but then I thought what if he kills me <laughs> you gotta think about that kind of stuff those yeah. are the important questions yeah like yes I'm trying to help but then like you have to think you generally don't know people's true intentions yeah yeah like this is how people drive <laughs> like, yeah so um I took him maybe like an hour and I was like I'm so sorry but this is the furthest I can take you mm. and he was like where'd you take him I don't know <laughs> just the middle of nowhere I don't know no I dropped him off because he was saying somehow like he had no money mm. and he lived blah 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 but his story didn't add up mm. and I was like this is every hitchhiker's yeah fucking story like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like I don't even know I've what he has in his back I've before mm. was it in that movie Psycho <laughs> <laughs> no and then I was just like uh, he was saying that he was going to Salvo's yeah. and he um, asked them if he could volunteer to make money for the day so he could have money to catch a bus or transport home and Salvo said no and one thing I worked for Salvo to do community service they fucking suck. <laughs> they are not helping the community. There really? was this one time, right, this old lady comes in and she picks up an item and the tag was green. And mm. apparently on green, it means that the sale is only on Thursdays or something, mm -hmm. okay? And she, it was, um, she walked it up to the counter and she was like, um, you know, can I, can I just have this $5 cheaper? And, she's like, and the lady was like, no, it's for Thursday. So you come back on Thursday and then I was like, and she was like, oh, but I took the bus to you and this is the only item I like and I can't come back on Thursday. Mm. And she was like, if you don't have the $5, you can't have it. Jeez. And I was just like, and I'm doing community service? <laughs> I'm like, we're robbing from the yeah. old. Like, So then after that, I started resenting it. Stopped mm. going community service. And then they threw me in jail. What? Yeah. <laughs> Boom, there's another Sheesh. one. <laughs> Man, this episode is just beginning, man. We've got to leave soon, man. No, but anyways, yeah. And then when they asked me, I told them, and they were like, that's not right. And I was like, exactly. So what the fuck am I in jail for? <laughs> Give me the fuck out. Yeah. Dang. Okay. So, well, how long were you in there for? Uh, I was sentenced nine months. But I only did five days. Damn. And then I was on house arrest for two months. And then I had sign in for a whole year, good behavior for a whole year, mm -hmm. a whole year. Um, on the two months that I was on house arrest, I was allowed out 1201 to 1202. So what? one minute. What so I would hell? bolt the fuck out of my driveway and just be like, <laughs> <laughs> and then walk my ass back inside, <laughs> continue my games. <laughs> what the fuck? One minute? One minute. Like, it was like, they were like really fucking with me. That's a m mental game. Like, if yeah. they gave you no minutes, it would be like, I know. way better. I yeah. know, but you should have seen what I did in that minute, bro. <laughs> and like, I lived on Hamilton Road as well, so I was just like, man, <laughs> like every car that drove past, I was like, <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Wait, so, wait, so they sent you to jail for not doing community service. Why did you have to do community service? Because I hit someone. Oh, wait, wait, like, like, like by car or? No, with my fist. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> when was it? This was 11 months after Dylan passed away. It oh, was just yeah. the wrong person, even, wrong time. I don't even blame you. It's like... Yeah. And then yeah. says, I'm Literally. And like, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> All right, but then, and then after that, it didn't stop. Like, I just like flipped and then yeah. somehow like picked her up. Threw her over my shoulder. Oh, By the way, she was like, serb. And she was like... Definitely twice the size. I didn't like. She dropped, and I was like, "How do you so light? <laughs> what happened?" It's like, oh, that's why I hang out with fobs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so the time I yeah. <laughs> so holding the guitar. That's why the biceps. You know? <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah. So that that oh, is man. another story. That 
um, that advice is a whole thing on its own. Mm. My, my only thing that I took from that is if you're young and someone pisses you off, mm. um, if it's got nothing, if they don't, if it's about you, um, you should find within yourself to let it go. If it affects your family, if they've touched your family, or it, that is when you can. Mm. You know, if it's not that, then it's not worth it. Mm. Like, yeah. um, I now I just got fired from my job that I really was enjoying because of this criminal record mm. that was seven years ago. Mm. And they were like, oh, we just did a police check, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I declared it. And they're like, yeah, we know, but we can't have that on this site. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck. Like, if I could go back and tell myself, yeah. be like, hitting her, it like it's not worth it. Yeah. It must have felt good at that one, just a few seconds when you talked yeah, to her. It, yeah, but in then, that moment. But and then the residual effects. Yep. Like Sixty thousand dollars later, for bail, with solicitors, um, you know, no, it's not worth it. Yeah. Like, just don't do it. Yeah, especially, like, if it's just a little thing. If it's a little know. thing, yeah. But obviously, I was young. Mm. I was built with like so much fucking anger. Trauma. And yeah, like and your bodily it, everything was just up. bottled up, and it just, it just, mm. yeah. You had to come out somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Poor girl. Man. So I want to wrap this up because I mm. can see people starting to leave the library. Literally. But um, like you've gone through so many character building experiences. Yes. Yeah. Like, and it's so corny, but so true that what doesn't kill you does make you stronger. Yes. So. Yes. Why do you think, like, God? or the universe, or whatever you want to call it, a higher power, puts us through all these trials and tribulations? Um, our soul contract. Mm, now you're talking. <laughs> our soul contract. So, you know, I don't know, true believer in, like, all that other stuff, but um, God gives the, his strongest the hardest battles. Mm. Um, through this, because I'm stubborn, I had to go through the hardest of the hard. Mm. Um, and in that, I think, like, slowly I'm finding that, yeah, I'm just here to help. That's all I can do. If, mm. I, if I could help one person, that's it. Mm. I don't care. It was one person. Mm. It made an impact to someone in this lifetime. Exactly. And I'll do it again in the other, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's like a domino effect, because as soon as you impact that one person, they get better, and then they make yeah. everyone around them better, yeah. and then it's a ripple effect. Yeah. And then well, it ends up touching the whole world. Corny, cliche, but at the end of the day, love is the answer to everything. That's what, that's what we're lacking each mm. year, each generation that passes. We're less compassionate, we're less loving. And it's, look at our lives today, look at our, like, our world today. Mm. Especially with the whole corona thing too. Like yeah. everyone's like, oh, stay away from me. Yeah, facts. Like, you know, back then it was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, yeah. it's, it's that. I, I do believe that love is like the answer. Mm. Like, if everyone could just see... Hug trees. Yeah, dude, that, I've actually... Have you tried that? I need to. I was told I need to. Um, need to get out there, ground myself, but mm. I haven't had time to, like... And I don't want to look like a weirdo. Like, like, yeah. <laughs> just do, do it to mm. one inside your house or something. Like, if no, you have, like, it has to be outside. Oh, uh, actually, well, I guess it's connected to the soil. Um, yeah. Hugging a pot. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck. We, we're going to continue this yes. episode. But we'll wrap it up there. Yeah. Thank you, Tina, for um, You're joining Thank me you for on this me. amazing episode. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you guys the next one. Make sure you like, subscribe, smash the like button, or the, or the YouTube Where is shit. it? Here, here, yeah, here, 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 here. It's everywhere. Just look for it. <laughs> click that shit, because that helps us. And we want to spread this message of love. And uh, yeah, thank you, guys. Have a lovely day. Sign and off. Wildin' out. Wildin' out. Oh man. <laughs> that was really out of this world. Yeah. <laughs> There's still so much to share about. I know. I'm like, when I really like say it out loud, I'm like, really? <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I thought I was a boring person. Dude, what are you talking about? Because like, I don't do anything. Well, things have happened to you. <laughs>
Like, you know, well, I'm just like, I don't want to do it. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, just tap out. Yeah. Like, oh, God. I didn't ask for I, this. I know. Everything happens for a reason. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Give me a break. I know I signed that soul contract, yeah. but I'm tired now. I'll can pay I, the pound. Can I be a caterpillar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, they, they would have a crazy life too, man. Like, imagine, like, Getting into a cocoon and like fully and then coming out of moth. Yeah, fucking like dis dissolving your 